is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Kempel with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. I'm super excited. This is the first time I've had a guest zoom in all the way in from Delhi, India. So he is in the future. He's going to tell us some like, he's going to predict the lottery numbers for us. Please welcome Sandeep Nat. He is the founder of Renewalism. Sandeep, thank you for joining us today. Can you please tell the audience a little bit about yourself and, and your background? Thank you, dear. It's my pleasure entirely. It's so awesome to address your audience today. And you guys, you, you're getting such a fantastic time with uh, Deanne and this podcast. I'm happy to be part of it. Let's see what wisdom I can bring from uh, the Orient to you. In fact, that's what I do. I specialize in ancient Oriental wisdom. And I've had the good fortune of distilling a lot of uh, this wisdom from Tibet and China and Japan and, of course, India, where I belong, over the last 15 years. And that's what I'm putting to use in the corporate space today. So, you know, we are faced with so many challenges around stress and uh, lifestyles and business complexities and the way we've convoluted systems that have stopped serving us and all of that. Yeah. But renewal is about just renewing all that. You got to look into it once again and see how it can start serving you again. So it starts from right inside you, your mind, body, spirit, around you, your relationships, and all around how you impact the planet, how how our systems can change and all of that. So looking forward to a great conversation there, Dan. I, I love it. So, you know, I resonate with a lot of that because I feel like you know we a lot of people are pre-programmed and it allow it for it it that pre-programming prevents them from tapping into their true potential so can you tell us like how let's say someone comes to you what does re you did say what renewalism is what that kind of means but what does that look like for a, a client okay <laughs> so for a client they would realize that they are renewing when they have already started on the process let me just pull back a little. You know, this book, which I wrote, uh, actually I wrote it in 2019 at the end of 19, but it was released in the middle of the pandemic. This book is about 30 habits, okay. which allow us to renew at a self level, at a symbiotic level, the relationships yeah. around, and at a systemic level. Yeah. So when we start renewing at a self level, it's where we start feeling younger. We start feeling healthier we start feeling more organized, more productive, more in love, more caring, and all of those happy things, you know, yeah. which yeah. happen because of certain habits we've created. And we don't even know that these habits are leading to this, sure. but it's because of the nature of the habit that the result is this. And we've known this for four, 5,000 years. We just have to start bringing those small, small things. So I'll give you an example of a habit. Okay. For instance, uh, Let's let's look at breathing, okay? <laughs> it's something nobody can escape. The day you escape breathing, you're off the planet. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Simple thing like breathing, okay? Let's talk about breathing. I advocate that you could just breathe three breaths in awareness yeah. every couple of hours. So if you just breathe in one, two, three, four, five, and breathe out one, two, three, four, five, three times, You've done 30 seconds of breathing in awareness. Yeah. But you notice the difference it makes to the freshness, the calmness, the peace that you feel at the end of 30 seconds. Yeah. Now, if you do this every couple of hours, you're going to be fresh and lively and happy and uh, good for the rest of your family, for the rest of your day. So why don't we just do this? Every time you send a mail out, breathe consciously. Every time you finish a project, breathe consciously. Just that, yeah, stuff like that. I, I like that. Um, so I kind of can. I I feel like I've been on, on a process of, of renewing and not not even really aware of it, like you're talking about, because I I have really taken on some much better habits for myself. Not that I have ever been like really terrible. <laughs> I'm very Type A, very like you know overachiever, but in the last couple of months, I have created habits that have like more structure to my life and that are healthier for me where I have become more organized and I've become more productive. And so I love that. So let's just, just 
let's say a, your client comes to you and they aren't in that whole like self-aware um, phase where they are starting to renew. Do you help them figure that out? Absolutely. So uh, let's say they have started on this journey because, you know, typically when we are in our 30s and 40s, we start understanding that there are things that we wanted to do which have not happened at the pace that we wanted them to happen. Okay. Or we have actually gone at that pace and that pace is burning us out because we hadn't bargained for that. I mean, that's not what we signed up for. We wanted to be the CEO of the company and all of that, which, you know, I've been through that. At uh, in, in my early 30s, I had set up my own company. And by my late 30s, I was feeling burnt out and I was actually feeling, uh, what is the purpose of all this? I mean, is this what I really want? And uh, if I may, uh, for the benefit of viewers, just so that you know, I didn't completely answer your question about uh, um, my backstory. So I'll just put a little bit of that in, you know. We're talking around 2005, 15, 16 years ago, when uh, this was happening. I was about seven, eight years into my company and I was actually uh, troubled, I was disturbed by what my clients were doing. And I'm talking about clients like large business process outsourcing companies who were engaging hundreds of thousands of kids in India to answer the phones uh, from people in the US who were having problems with their credit cards and insurance claims and stuff like that. And I said, this can't be where the entire generation is headed because they are very smart young kids who are doing reasonably clerical work. In fact, I wouldn't, <laughs> clerical would be glorifying it. It is like robotic work. Yeah, yeah. Which is not something that they ought to have signed up for, even though they feel it's really hip and cool to be working nights and stuff, but it's against the biorhythm. It's not going to work right. So something's wrong in the way that these huge monolithic uh, mega corps are, um, are, are framing our uh, that's consciousness. Where pre, that's where the pre-programming starts. Yes. Yeah. And that, that, that search for then what is our purpose? What is our consciousness? That's what took me to these Vedic masters and Oriental masters. They, they have the answers. I spent a few months in the monasteries uh, in the Himalayas wow. uh, looking at answers from, you know, the energy point of view. How does energy flow through us? Yeah. And what I bring to clients today, the first thing in the probably in the first interaction we have is the feeling of energy. Because this is a very woo-woo concept. I mean, energy, like what's that? But I explain it simply uh, for the scientifically minded. Einstein's proof that E is equal to MC squared. So energy is matter. Matter is energy. Yeah. So anywhere you see matter, it's energy. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's not woo-woo anymore. Yeah. And and if you if you think of it as a vibration, so it's those atoms that are vibrating, they're atoms between you and me. Yeah. And, uh, or rather between my computer and uh, me. And if I can just harness these atoms and this energy, which supposedly is in my force field yes. and strengthen my force field, I could be immune. I could be happy. I could be intuitive. I could be intentional. I could be clear right. because our interactions are shaped by this energy. Yes. So you feel your energy in the very first go, and then you learn, you know, just like you could feel electricity without seeing it. You, you get a light bulb on and you know there's electricity flowing. Likewise, you get a sensation and you know that there's energy flowing. And now it's only about how do you light light bulbs? How do you light yeah. hearts of people? How do you light society? Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> I'm all about the energy like you know you and I might talk about that and some people probably look at me like listen to this chick you know blah 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 but I feel <laughs> like it's true though so you, there are people you come across and their energy is just great you know and there's other people the energy people you come across and their energy is really bad and you're like stay away you know because I'm not about to have any of that penetrate this because <laughs> this is all good stuff here <laughs> I don't want none of that that negativity or any of that bad juju like in my bubble <laughs> right absolutely that's that's the word so true, once true. somebody like get taps into that um, self-awareness where they want to start renewing what is the next stage so it's 
customized. It's sure. based on where are you facing the bottlenecks. So the bottleneck in this case would be a kind of cesspooling or a stagnation of energy. Right. Yeah. And we've got to change the paradigm. The, the first thing after you've experienced energy is to reframe your paradigms about everything, sure. including who you are. So you stop seeing yourself as a physical body and start seeing yourself as an energy body. And then you get more in touch with yourself. Your body starts talking to you and you start seeing how uh, the flow is getting inhibited in places which may manifest yeah. in physical ailments, in emotional disturbances, in mental health issues, in stuff that you would, you know, pop in a pill for and have other side effects going on. But here's a possibility where you could stop taking pills for the rest of your life. Right. And I'm not talking about energy healing per se, I'm just talking about energy practices. Right. Something that's called Qi Gang. Qi is energy and Gang is work in Mandarin. So Qigong is just how you work with energy. And they've been doing it for four or 5,000 years. Let's bring that back. Mm -hmm. And uh, that starts self-regulation of health. Yes, yes. Now, it's not just one's own health. It could be the health of relationships. It's not just relationships with people. It's relationships with consciousness. It could be relationships with money. I mean, the guy is broke all the time. Mm -hmm. Another guy in the same circumstances is not what's the change in relationship sure so we, we could we could look at solving that problem that's why i said it's customized but uh, all the solutions are there with us yeah. in our energetic selves which is what i call inner power we have the inner power i love it. all of it i love it so much i feel like when people are blocking that energy where they where they're just not tapping into it and they're not like um, really connected with themselves it creates so much dysfunction and like disease and sickness and just you know mentally physically emotionally and so I feel like when you just allow yourself to to give in to that that natural energy force and be connected to the world to the earth to each other that it just opens up a whole new universe for you I really I really do believe that I mean I, I practice yoga you know, I'm, I am a religious person, but I do believe that energy is part of our life force. It is a real thing. It's a real living, breathing thing. And when, you know, if someone has cut themselves off from that and they have gotten stagnant in that cesspool, like you said, it is just such, they do, they're, they're, it's such a disservice to themselves and to their life and everyone around them. <laughs> no, I, I like to expand on that. You, you brought up a couple of very interesting points there, Ian. Uh, one is a short point about, you know, it's not about whether one is religious or not, because uh, I wouldn't really call myself religious. Okay. Uh, because I'm not into any sort of uh, practice or ritual or, you know, going to the church or to the temple or uh, anywhere. But I believe that's just a label. So we're label free here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> Let's just label it energy or just let label it divinity, you know, and you could call the divinity a Jesus or you could call it uh, Allah or you could call it whatever you choose to, sure. but it is a divine energy. Yeah. So that's, that's for, uh, you know, religious, non-religious people. Uh, it, it, energy doesn't relate at that level. The second thing, which was a, a lot more interesting, which you said earlier was about how people, um, self-sabotage themselves, uh, if I may use that word, yeah. by being out of alignment. And that is that is really important. I thought I'd just throw in a practical example for uh, listeners, right. viewers, whatever, for that, you know, that practically we are a trinity of the body, the mind, and the spirit. So the whole goal, insofar as... Uh, let's say Qigong practices go, is to get into alignment of that body, mind, and spirit. If you can achieve that alignment, you are sorted. Okay, you are in harmony. Now, let's look at the manifestation of these things because we can really see where the manifestations appear and then see how our habits can change the manifestation, the results of the manifestations. Sure. So the manifestation of the body is in things that we do, okay. right? 
we physically act upon things. The manifestation of the mind is in the thoughts yes. which come from the ego mind or they could even come from the subconscious mind or they could come from a very deep state which is uh, the karmic state, the unconscious mind, which, uh, which may or may not be something everybody agrees with because the karmic state then goes into the afterlife and life after life uh, processes. Okay, right, right. So, but we all agree with the subconscious mind at least, right? And yeah. those things that we are programmed with, like you said. Mm -hmm. So the mind generates the thoughts. Yes. And finally, there is what we feel. The, that is the true subconscious uh, programming, which is different from the ego mind. But, you know, there, there, is, there, there are these deep uh, feelings which are energetic hunches. Like you said, I, I don't want to have anything to do with that person or something like that. Those are energetic hunches. So when we can, so I call these three, the say, which is what you say, which is the manifestation of your thoughts. You say your thoughts, right? The do, what you act upon, what your body is about. Right. And the be, what you really feel from inside, what is part of your being. We are human beings. Yeah. Right? So when there is a change in the harmony or the in the alignment of the say, do, be, we are stressed. Yeah. We are diseased. We are having problems. And you can examine that. Each one of you can examine that. Is what you say exactly what you feel? Right. Or are there times when you say things just to please the neighbors? Yeah, right. Other times you do things just because your job depends on it. You don't feel like it. Right. Other times when you are actually saying things that you don't do. Yeah. <laughs> and doing things that, you know, you... you, you I actually didn't mean to. And all those times are the little times where you're adding up stress termites in your house, in, in this house. Yeah. And those termites can really eat you up. Wow. That's so, that's very true. I, I can, I can definitely agree. Speaking from experience, I feel like, you Oops. know, over these last five years, I have learned to become in alignment with myself and my world has opened up. And I have experienced such incredible peace and such joy, like internal joy and happiness where I can be in silence by myself and just be and not, be. you know, and not like be like, um, I mean, of course we have bad days, right? But those bad days, we have to learn how to bring it back to refocus our energy and to, to, to get back to our calm, right? So for me, I have definitely like, I, I can Hey guys, I speak from experience, get within alignment with yourself, figure out what that is. Because once you get there, the world just opens up for you so much more um, totally. than you can possibly imagine. Um, totally. I wanted to actually, you have a couple of questions here and I, I like this first one because I think that a lot of people, and that's why I started my podcast. Um, how do we find our purpose and our, our passion? Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that's coming straight into me and taking whoever asked that. Thank you for asking. Because you asked the question that I asked in 2005, what is our purpose? Yeah. Now, you don't have to go to the Himalayas. You don't have to go to any of the oriental places or meet any of those gurus. I'll tell you, it is right here. It's in this book, in fact. Five levels of purpose. Our purpose, as we understand it from the way that we are conditioned by our education, by our society, is to perform. So these are five P's, okay? And I'd like you to just check where in these five you might lie. So this is a time for introspection. I'll speak slowly. Think about it. Okay. The first P is performing. So we are so busy performing things Busy being busy, doing things, picking up the kids, dropping them off, uh, going to work, coming back, switching on the TV, sitting around like a zombie, reading the newspaper, throwing something into our mouth, going to the bathroom, and day's over. Yeah. Just yeah. performing tasks. Just, just but a, somewhere. Existing. Right? Existing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we wouldn't call it existing because that sort of belittles us we're right. performing we're doing stuff i mean we are really busy people <laughs> right when that's that's in fact where we come to the second stage where the ego gets a little more pumped up 
Okay. And we get into proving. So then we are proving we, we have to do things. We've got to get better than somebody else. We've got to win that award. We've got to finish okay. that report. We've got to back the contract. We've got to, you know, it's, it's all about proving that we are. And somewhere that proving even takes a few of us, very few of us, connected with things that are actually making our heart happy. And what makes your heart happy is what I call passion. So you might be proving things, but if you're proving things in the same alignment, if your work and what makes your heart happy are in alignment, then you are really passionate about doing stuff. Yeah. And you know that passion has energy and that passion pushes itself across your organization and you know you see people grow and you feel you've got really serious purpose now yes. right and you you're you're sort of gripped in purpose you get successful and that's when you enter the fourth stage and the fourth stage is pondering yes it's a chasm because suddenly you've got all the success you wanted now what yeah now what? And that's very dangerous. Yeah. You know, the best of celebrities, I won't take names, but you know, get on to drugs, get on to uh, unfair practices, get on to various other types of abuses because they have got successful with what they were passionately focused on. And now they, 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 they can get away with anything. They can you know, let's try this. Let's try that. Yeah, that's a day. And there, there are so many CEOs who have committed suicide because at the top of their career, because they just wanted to try something and they got into embezzlement and financial indiscipline and they couldn't face society again. But on the other hand, there are people like Ashoka, who's uh, an Indian emperor from the second century who saw so much of killing as he became the emperor of probably the largest land space in those days. Yeah. And he said, why am I killing all these people? What are we doing? And Ashoka is not remembered as a ruler as much as he's remembered as the man who got the teachings of the Buddha back to the world and took them all over China and Southeast Asia. Wow. So the Ashoka is in more recent times, there are people like uh, Mahatma Gandhi, who is called reverently given the title of Mahatma because that is a Maha Atma, a huge soul. Like so that. this huge soul could have been a lawyer right. in South Africa, which is wh where he was. And he was doing very well. He was educated in the UK and, uh, you know, he would have returned to India. He would have been a nice middle class, successful foreign returned uh, barrister. But he did what made his heart happy. He decided, I'm going to fight this injustice of uh, what he found in South Africa first. And then he discovered it's happening right here in my own country. I will not stand for this. And I will stand peacefully for it. And because he followed something which made his heart happy, but his pondering did not push him into the chasm, but actually got him out to focus on others. Yeah. Taking Buddhism everywhere across the, the subcontinent, taking injustice out of a system and so many other things that so many friends of yours, I'm sure, have discovered, they move to the purpose of prosperity. That's the final key. It's always outward looking. So if you're looking for purpose, look for stuff that makes your heart happy, but is focused outwards. That's the best purpose you can find. Otherwise, you know, you can have a great purpose of sleeping uh, all the time and watching <laughs> Netflix or whatever it is, but they're only getting down the chasm that. sometime. <laughs> I love that. That was amazing. Um, Thanks for asking whoever that was. That is, that is an awesome question. Yes. Where can, if somebody wants to reach out to you, get connected with you, where can they find you? Can you plug all your links? Sandeepnath.com on the top right, you've got this connect. I love to connect with anybody and uh, just click on the button and choose your social handle, choose your medium, choose your poison as they might say. Also renewalism.com is where you could read more about, uh, you know, how this purpose then leads to clarity 
and that clarity leads to renewal yeah. so the 30 habits and i'm not going to get into those of course on this show but uh, like diane has put it in her life and seen the, the the difference it makes it is because of the kind of work she's doing because of the contribution she's making she is standing for prosperity of all of you guys in this entire ecosystem which is what has brought her into that abundance you could do that by design tuck 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 one two three four yeah. 29 30. <laughs> oh my gosh you're making me cry like such good stuff oh my gosh thank you so much um, before we wrap things up, Sandeep, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience? Any final words? Stay blessed. Yeah. You know, these times are so difficult. Yes. And they may last, they, they may not go away in a hurry. A hundred years ago, the, the Spanish flu went on for three, four years. The world wars have gone on for five, six years. This is one of those times that we are living in. And uh, don't take things for granted be conscious you know mindfulness would be one of the habits of renewal and a lot of the habits of renewal in fact have just crept into our lives suddenly in fact that's why i didn't wait for a publisher i just took out this book last year because i believed that people would be able to relate with the habits uh, which were kind of channeled to me in the end of 2019 right. there was no coronavirus at that time i just happened to put this stuff together and it became so relevant so why i'm saying this is because like a habit of mindful living has been imposed upon us to be mindful of our mask to be mindful of our personal hygiene to be mindful of uh, you know coming in uh, contact with others just extend that mindfulness rather than regress from it post pandemic or when things become easier extend that into being mindful of what you eat being mindful of when you've uh, last met your parents or when you've said something nice to your better half or to your um, kids or stuff like that be mindful of how much you consume how much of electricity how much of water this stuff is not gonna last forever pandemic or no pandemic so move on those lines and renew the planet this is a great opportunity Mother Nature has given us by bringing that virus along uh, to, to focus on a few of these, on many of these things, in fact. In fact, th there was an episode of the Renewalism show in which I was recounting 21 of the 30 habits have been kind of forced upon us in some way or the other. I love that. And uh, we could do it by design. Yes. Amen to that. That was amazing, Sandeep. Amen to that. Thank you for being a guest. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Kempel with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And I'll be back very soon with more dynamic guests.